Uh, my name is Zhen Qing Gao, and so the topic I would like to talk about today is random matrices. And as you know, that this is a new feature that we, intru uh, that we introduced in Mathematica 10.3. Uh, so motivation, why do we introduce random matrices into open language? So part of the reason is that we know that in many disciplines of research, we know uh, they use matrix models, such as in physics, statistics, mathematics, and the other applied area like finance and some engineering fields. And when the dimension of these matrices are large, there are some properties that are independent of the uh, specific details of the system. And like some of the properties like uh, eigenvalues will converge to some uh, asymptotic law. So because of this reason, it makes the study of vendor matrices particularly important. Okay. And it actually can be used to characterize some of the properties of the underlying uh, system. Okay. And that's why that's part of the reason that we introduced random matrices. And on the aspects of uh, Wolfram language, so previously our sampling framework worked pretty well with the, uh, the scalar and better value random variables. So we're trying to go a step forward and try to extend the sampling framework to then to deal with uh, matrix value random variables. And at the same time, sampling some of those extended lower dimensional properties of those. Okay. And in addition to the uh, least matrix value random variables, we also increase the support of some of the univariate distribution that are derived from the symptotic properties of the matrix eigenvalues. And these include uh, the ones Sasha has mentioned before. One is the tracy wooden distribution, and the other one is the Machonko posture distribution. Okay. So there are many applications that are related to random matrices. Like in multivariate statistics, we know that in regression, when we consider about the residual term of those, uh, those residual, residual terms are essentially distributed as matrix normal. And if you consider about the scale version of those, then those are matrix T distributed. And in other area like a PCA, MANOVA, uh, such in this field, the uh, main focus is on the empirical covariance matrix. And this matrix belongs to the class which is the uh, which are distribution. And, and, uh, and one particular uh, research of those is on the eigenvalue distribution of those. And this belongs to the uh, Machonko pasture law. And here's just a PDF of the corresponding distribution. Okay. And on, in physics, we know that uh, random matrix theory is reduced in the, during the study of nuclear physics, especially on the spectra of uh, heavy atoms. So because most of those Hamiltonians are quite complicated, so instead of dealing with those with first principle computations, uh, some approximate uh, models while well, modeling things are used to approximate the Hamiltonian system. Like, for example, you, uh, Gaussian ensemble and circular ensembles are, are introduced to predict the, uh, the spectra of the corresponding system. Okay. And this framework has also been extended and used in other uh, field of uh, statistics like the statistical mechanics, quantum chaos, and quantum gas. Okay. And there are also interesting limiting distribution associated with those like uh, Wittner semicircle law, which is one shown at here, and the other one is Tracy Wooden law. Okay. And this one is related to the scale largest eigenvalue of the uh, Gaussian ensemble. Okay. So in the following slide, I'm going to briefly talk about the matrix distributions that we introduced. Okay. So the first I'm going to talk about is Gaussian ensemble. And as you know, last, these are structured matrices that consist of independent Gaussian ent entries. And as you can see from here, this is just the probability density of it. Okay. So there are three particularly important class, which are unitary matrix uh, Gaussian unitary ensemble, Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, and Gaussian symplectic ensembles. So these ensembles are also called invariant ensemble because the distribution of those are invariants under the associated uh, transformation like unitary, orthogonal, and symplectic. Okay. And as I mentioned previously, the, motiv the main motivation of introducing these ensembles are uh, for the uh, study of nuclear physics, especially only on the spectrum of those. So as you know that all these ensembles, well, matrix distribution work pretty well with our random sampling framework. Like for example, in this case, um, I can simply type uh, random variable here and then specify the, uh, the distribution, like for example, Gaussian symplectic matrix distribution and specify the dimension of it. 
then I can get a then I can send a matrix from that, matrix value random variable from that. So in the following, I'm talk, going to talk about some of the vacation, the application of these and the property associated. But before I talk about those, I would like to briefly just talk about the matrix property distribution. So this is an object that we introduced to represent the distribution of the uh, lower dimensional properties of the matrix property uh, of the matrix value random variables. So in order to do so, we can just specify matrix property distribution first and consider about the expression that depends on the uh, depends on the matrix value random variable in the following way. And it could have uh, more than one distribution and just need to specify them in a list. Okay. So in the following example, I'm going to use this in, uh, repeatedly on various applications. Like the first one is the well-known Wigner semicircle law. Okay. So in order to illustrate this in Mathematica, so currently you just need to use matrix property distribution and specify the uh, property which is eigenvalues. Okay. So the first argument is just eigenvalues of x, and with x distributed, at, for example, in this case, it's Gaussian orthogonal matrix distribution. So I can sample from it and get eigenvalues. Then I can simply combine them together and see the uh, uh, asymptotic distribution of them. Okay, and then com also compare it with the uh, Wigner semicircle distribution. Okay. So as you can see, uh, with the help of matrix property di distribution, we can do some, uh, some interesting work in just, a, in just a few lines of code. And another important property is that are associated with the uh, uh, Gaussian ensemble is that we can consider about the spacing of those eigenvalues. And this is, uh, you can think of it as the spacing of the energy spectrum, okay? And say for example, in this case, I can just sample, uh, consider about sampling from the Gaussian unitary ensemble and then compute the eigenvalues in the case of uh, dimension two. And it's well known that the, uh, the spacing distribution of it is distributed as the uh, wigner semis PDF. So, just as before, we can use matrix property distribution to do a sampling from it and compare it with Wigner surmise. Okay. And the last uh, important properties that are associated with Gaussian ensemble is that uh, the Tracy Witten law. And as you know, that this one is associated with the largest eigenvalue of the matrix. Okay. So in order to do so, again, we use the matrix property distribution and do some sampling from it. But in this case, we need to do a super scaling so they can converge to the, uh, uh, to the property distribution, like this case. So in this case, I consider about the case of uh, Gaussian symplectic ensemble, and this one belongs to a Tracy Witten law of, uh, of type beta equal to four. So this is one of the basic motivated example, and the other example is the circular ensemble. So uh, these ensembles are defined on matrix group, like uh, unitary group, orthogonal group, and uh, quaternion. <coughs> oh, sorry, and the uh, compact symplectic group. Okay. So the reason we say that this is uniform is because the probably measure of it is invariant under the group operation. So <coughs> And it has many different applications in physics, like uh, um, because many of these properties actually depends on the symmetries of the underlying, phys on, uh, underlying physical system. And it has one interesting property, which is that, for example, in the circular real case, it can be used to generate a random rotation matrix in arbitrary dimension. So the computation of it is quite uh, is pretty straightforward. So in this case, you just need to use the QR decomposition to do the sampling of it. Yeah, the only difficult case is that typically uh, those QR decomposition only defined on uh, real and complex numbers. But in order to do so, we also, uh, we also implement some code that can do QR decomposition for quaternions. Okay. Other than the uniform distribution of matrix groups, the circular ensemble also concerned about the subsets of these uh, matrix groups. 
Say, for example, the circular orthogonal matrix distribution is basically the uh, uniform distribution on symmetric unitary uh, matrices. And the other one, which is the uh, uniform distribution on, well, sympathetic matrices that satisfy such property. So again, just like the previous examples, we can also consider about the eigenvalue distribution and spacing distribution by using the, uh, matrix property distribution to do sampling from it and compare with the uh, limiting law. Okay, so the first example is about the distribution of eigenvalues. Since we know that all these matrices are unitary, so the eigenvalues should have a, a magnitude equal to one. So in order to categorize those, we only need, to, only need to consider about the face of them. So in this case, I sample the eigenvalues and take the arc to obtain the face angle. Okay. And for the case of circular unitary ensemble, uh, the distribution of face should be uniform, as you can see from here. Okay. And the next thing interesting to talk about is about the spacing distribution of these eigenvalues. So basically you can just order in the uh, eigenvalues by this numerical order and then compute the difference and see how they distribute it. And for, for this particular case, they also uh, converge to the Wigner and Mice PDF when the dimension of the matrix is large enough from this example, as you can see. And there are also physics applications of these ensembles, such as that uh, the distribution of their eigenvalues is the same as the Boltzmann distribution of Coulomb gas in a 2D case, while restricting those gas on the circle. So in this case, we can, well, just write down the Hamiltonian, because you know there's Coulomb, so the interact interaction uh, potential energy should be taken form of log, as you can see. So we can write down a function which represents the Hamiltonian and do the sampling from that because we know the eigenvalues of those, uh, I, mean, I mean the phase angle of those distributed essentially as the circular unitary, uh, circular ensembles. Okay, so with this, with the sampling framework that we have, we can easily compute it, for example, the, uh, uh, the mean of the Hamiltonian to get some thermodynamic properties of it. then we can easily see that how the average Hamiltonian depends on the system size. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the horizontal line just corresponds to the uh, uh, theoretical results when n tends to infinity. And as I mentioned previously, one of the application of circular ensemble is that we can use those to generate random rotation. So, it's just a, here's just a very simple example. Say, for example, we can apply the uh, uh, rotation matrix on, on the vector and see how they distributed in the space. And this part it should be uniformly distributed. And we can also do this a, bit, a step further. Say, for example, we can consider about uh, random rotation in, in the four-dimensional case. So we can, again, simple the point. And then, in order to visualize it, we can use a technique that's called half map. So we can map the uh, three sphere back to uh, S2 cross S1. So we are going to index the, uh, the points by using the parameters in S1 to see those. So it's just here is just the half map. And then we can just group them by using the parameters in S1 and visualize them in animate. Yeah, so again, in this case, they are just uniformly distributed because half map preserved the measure during the transformation while restricting those on the, uh, on, on the unit sphere. Okay. And circular ensemble is also closely related to Gaussian ensemble because you can essentially uh, construct boundary motion in circular ensemble by using the matrices from Gaussian ensemble as an infinitesimal generator. And here's just one example of this. So in order to do so, the first thing we can do is to sample matrices from Gaussian unitary ensemble, say for example in this case. So in this case, I sample 100,000 of those two by two uh, uh, Gaussian matrices. And then I can generate Brownian path based on this by using an initial condition, which is a unitary matrix, 
and uh, simply apply uh, the, uh, the evolution operators on it. Okay. So in order to see this, we can visualize it. We can take a look at the face of those eigenvalues okay. and compare them with the theoretical result. So the previous two examples I talked about are more like physically motivated. And there are also other matrix distribution, like for example in this case, we short matrix distribution. So the distribution of it is essentially the distribution of the empirical covariance matrix. So in this case, it's constructed by uh, taking the uh, two matrices by considering about the, uh, in this form, so we consider about the uh, a list of uh, multivariate Gaussian vectors. So I can take this operation so I can get the uh, empirical covariance matrix. So this matrix uh, the ensemble is particularly useful in PCA as mentioned previously and also in Bayesian inference. And also for example, another important area is that for example in, in expectation maximization, we can use the sampling of which are matrix to construct a uh, at the initial, initial sampling stage to figure out which one has the largest, uh, which one has the larger uh, log likelihood. Okay. So this distribution is speci can be specified by two parameters. One of them is the degree of freedom, and the other one is the scale matrix sigma in this case. And another related one is just inverse, which are matrix, but this one is essentially the inverse of the previous one. So Huishar matrix is actually a generalization of, uh, of chi-square distribution to the uh, matrix case. And an interesting property of this is that if we collapse this to the, uh, maybe say for example, take projection of this back to scalar, then this expression is actually chi-square distributed. So again, we can use the uh, random sampling and then construct the uh, corresponding expression, construct the corresponding expression and do distribution fixed test, and also visualize the results with histogram. And as mentioned previously, one particularly important property associated with that is that the singular values of the Huichuan matrix distributions obeys the Mochanko pasture law. Okay, so in order to demonstrate this, uh, we can again use matrix property distribution. So in this case, we sample, sample eigenvalues of them and join them together. So we can do an estimated distribution and see which particular uh, family of it belongs to. And also, again, we can also compare the data with the, uh, by using histogram and the online uh, PDF. And also, another thing to talk about is that there's also a Tracy Wooden law associated with which are ensemble like that. This one. Okay. Uh, the other two I'm going to talk about are matrix normal and matrix T distribution. So these are just uh, also the generalization of normal and T distributions to the matrix case. So uh, in matrix normal distributions, there are two parameters to specify. One is the uh, row covariance, and the other one is the covariance on the columns. And also, you can specify it to have a non-zero mean uh, there as a matrix there. Mm -hmm. And matrix distribution, while the definition of it is pretty much similar as the uh, either the univariate case or the uh, vector case, because it's just the uh, mixture distribution uh, parameter mixture distribution of matrix normal with sigma sample from the inverse Huy chart. Okay. Okay. And here are just some of the examples like, uh, so for example, all these mission distributions works, works, works pretty well with our random sampling framework. So we can sample from this and do some visualization. Say for example, this one. So you can give you uh, some qualitative idea about how the uh, data is cor uh, correlated. And also, Matrix normal distribution can also be used in con unconditional sampling of uh, some discrete time series process like this one, if the uh, covariance matrix are given explicitly. Say for example, in this case, we can use 
matrix normal distribution to sample from scalar autoregressive process driven by a multivariate noise signal. So in this case, I just need to specify the uh, row covariance and column covariance, then do the random sampling to get the data. And also we can compare it uh, with the AR process by using our function of estimated process. So the previous examples I talked about are mostly related to matrix uh, value random variables. And there are also important things like the uh, like a, a symptotic limiting law. Say, for example, in this case, there are two uh, important limiting laws that I have briefly talked about previously, which are one of them is Mochenko pasture distribution, and the other one is the Tracy Wooden distribution. So, Mochenko pasture distribution is just the asymptotic distribution of single values of, uh, of matrices from which are ensemble. So, uh, it can be characterized by two parameters. So one of them is a scale uh, shape parameter, and the other one, sigma, is the, is the scale parameter. Okay. So the behavior of this really depends on the parameter lambda here. So for example, when lambda is less than one, it has a well-defined PDF, okay, as you can see. But uh, when lambda becomes greater than one, then the distribution is going to build up a non, uh, non-zero atomic weight at zero. And the reason of this is pretty straightforward is because that when we construct the, uh, the Huichar matrix like this, uh, when the lambda is greater than one, then the number of columns is going to greater than the number of rows. So in that case, it means that it's going to have a, the dimension of the uh, null space is going to be non-zero. So in that case, that's the reason it's going to build up an atomic weight here at zero. Okay. Uh, I guess the most uh, interesting example is probably about the Tracy Wooden distribution. So as you know that, uh, well, it's the distribution of the scale the largest eigenvalue from matrix ensembles like a Gaussian ensemble and which are ensembles. So in order to do the computation, well, actually there are the the CDF of this distribution can be expressed in closed form. But however, while well, there are two equivalent, equivalent uh, expression of this, one of them can be expressed as a solution of Penlevet type equation of type, the solution of Penlevet equation of type two. However, if you want to numerically solve this equation, it's quite difficult because that the equation itself is nonlinear stiff. So in order to solve them properly, and especially in this case, you need to solve it in the uh, domain which is from some bounded num finite number to infinity. And this makes it very difficult to do so. So instead of using this formulation, we actually uh, adopt a different one, which is by using another representation, which is by using the Fraudon uh, determinant. So in that case, you need to evaluate the Fraudon determinant numerically by properly truncating that and with the kernel function, that's the form of Irie function, okay? But actually, it doesn't really solve the whole issue because, for example, in either the left tail or right tail, uh, if you use the formulation of Valdon determinants evaluation numerically, you will typically get into some issue like a numerical cancellation, or either in the opposite case, you're going to encounter highly oscillatory behavior of Irie functions. So in, lakes, in that case, it makes the con uh, convergence really slow unless you specify a large no uh, amount of points. So, uh, so in the, when the magnitude of X is large, we simply use the asymptotic behavior, asymptotic uh, expansion of it. But one important case that when the, for example, the, the variable, the, the, the value of X is small, say for example, the order 10 by negative, in that case, we're also going to encounter the same issue because we're going, going to encounter, uh, uh, get into the oscillatory regime of Irie function. So in that case, we actually use a mixed strategy. So half of them, we computed them by using the Fraudon determinants, and the other part, we use the uh, uh, asymptotic expansion of Penlever 2, uh, the solution of Penlever 2, uh, 2 equation, okay? And this works pretty well in our test. Okay, so for this distribution, the PDFs and CDFs are supported, and also the moments 
also supported. But instead of just letting them evaluate into machine precision, uh, you want to, if you want to see the numerical approximation of this, you need to apply the function n on this to see the result. Okay. And we have also pre-computed the mean of precision with the distribution up to 50 digits of precision. Okay. And the next example is to show the tail of uh, tracer with the CDF. So, uh, and here are just the, uh, the approximation of the tracer with the CDF in, uh, in log scale. Okay, so we can see them and, and visualize on the plot. So on this scale, you probably couldn't see any different, but if we consider about the relative error between them, so we just simply divide one by another, then you can easily see that the asymptotic expansion doesn't perform quite well. It's going to have an uh, error as order of 10 to the minus 3. So that's the reason we adopt the strategy that I mentioned previously on handling the computation of least CDF. So uh, due to the reason that I mentioned previously, the computation of tracing within distribution can be quite costly if we didn't do any pre-computation to get some part of the results in, uh, in the central region. So, but there's actually another strategy on dealing with it, which is that uh, it is uh, common knowledge in statistics that we can approximate tracing with the distribution by using gamma distribution. And here I can show an example of this. Say, for example, we consider about the gamma distribution with uh, three parameters. And here's the form, corresponding form of PDF. So in order to match gamma distribution with trace of widen, the thing we can do is to, come, is to match the leading, uh, the first of the three leading moments, okay? So we can specify the moments of gamma distribution and also numerically evaluate the moments of trace of widen distribution like mean, variance, and skewness. And then I can do a fine rules to find out all those parameters. Okay. And then I can compare the PDF between them in the range which is s greater than five, minus five, but less than two. Okay, at least scales probably couldn't see any difference, but if we go a little bit closer to the tail, then you can easily see that they have several order, uh, they have a difference of several order of magnitude. Okay, so it really depends on your purpose that what's, this, what's the region that you're interested in. Okay, and the last example is that uh, the one Sasha has mentioned previously, so I just skip this one. So yeah, I think this ends my talk, and here's just some final remark. So in Mathematica 10.3, we introduced several different things, like uh, so the most important part is about the uh, sampling of matrix value random variables, like the one belongs to Gaussian ensemble, circular ensembles, and some other important matrix distribution like a Wishart, matrix normal, and matrix T. And also we introduce uh, new objects that can be used to represent the, uh, the lower dimensional properties of matrix value, random variables. And also there are two univariate distribution. They are related to the limiting distribution of eigenvalues. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs>